Hello, everyone. Welcome to Pixelated Perfect. I'm super excited today. I have Ariel with me. Um, we've kind of, I've had a couple of conversations with him, super, super interesting background, um, and some, some interesting facts for you guys to know before we jump into some questions about him. Um, he's been a design for professor for more than 10 years. He has a passion in education and digital design, and he was the director of graphic and multimedia and interaction design at Ude, which I'm not pronouncing well, so I'll ask you in a second how to pronounce it, but it's a really well-known university in Buenos Aires, Argentina, um, where he currently lives. So thank you, Ariel, for being here. I'm really excited to chat a little bit more with you. Of course. Thank you, Diane. And thank all the people here in this podcast from CDP. I'm really grateful to, to be here. So, uh, of course, I'm talking about uh, one of my favorite topics, uh, that it's uh, education. So, uh well, I can I can wait for the for the questions. Awesome, perfect, perfect. Yeah, super excited. So so let's dive in. Um, I want this podcast to definitely kind of focus on asking questions about your background in educating designers, graphic designers, product designers, multimedia designers, and helping them kind of set them up for success to be able to take what they've learned and bring it into a career once they graduate. So um, let's let's jump in. So my first question is, what was your first experience in teaching design? Well, uh, that came back uh, like uh, 10 or 12 years ago, I think 12 years ago. Uh, and uh, I was uh, stu already a student of graphic design career, a fresh student, actually, I was in my second year. Uh, and I, I, of course, uh, I did this course of study that um, had this this chair that it's from typography one subject, and uh, they were like uh, su super human, uh, and they were like a, a really um, they teach in a really great way in a really horizontal way. That means that no one uh, knows everything, and they just the knowledge is like from the community itself. So uh, I I really liked the way they they were teaching. So I asked them uh, if I could show in uh, that chair. Uh, in that subject and they say uh, yes but uh, I, I had first to to complete typography too they are both uh, an, uh, annual material so um, we had to 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 wait for that so I wait a year uh, and then I show in that that chair of studies um, and I was I was really nervous at first but the thing was that uh, I had a lot to say about not only about typography uh, but about design also so I, I was eager to to jump into the classes and like uh, share my my little bit of, of knowledge to to my to my students that uh, sadly in that year some of them were also my classmates so uh, it was a little bit tricky that, that right. first year because I had to to I don't know to give knowledge to people that uh, were was in, in my same in my same level so uh, it, it really was hard that first year. But uh, after that, it was just a natural thing. Uh, I was searching uh, always from, I don't know, uh, design trends to things about typography to technical knowledge. And I, I was uh, like really uh, happy to to share that with my students. So I guess it was like a, a start for me uh, year after year when I was more mature uh, being a professor, uh, I was seeing from the very beginning the the little details, but then uh, in I don't know the fourth or the fifth years, I was seeing the profession itself as a whole. I was already uh, a graphic designer with a degree, and I was already working, and then that gave me a, a whole vision of the problems that we face as uh, professionals. So uh, I was. Uh, searching about how to solve that problems in the community, in the design community, and then give that knowledge to to my students. So, so I, I think I, I became a, a little bit more strategic, uh, strategist with uh, my classes, uh, and I was like seeing the the whole picture of the design career. Yeah, um, no, that's fascinating. So, it did you always have this? want to like share your knowledge and to help people grow and learn or was that kind of like 
it's like you had this opportunity. It was kind of like this first thought in your head and you you went with it and then it kind of like took you on this direction of of really diving deeper into educating. Oh my God, that, that, that question uh, reminds me a, a lot of my childhood. I, I guess that the fault is, is uh, on my mother on this one. Um, I'm the, the third son and uh, my mother was a little busy uh, when I was young, like uh, when, when I was four, five, six years old. So uh, the, the the solution she came with uh, was like giving me these all these books that we had in our library, uh, and so I I will always ask things. I was just too curious to to be a, a four years old. I mean I was asking all this stuff, and she I mean she had the answers, but the the thing she did was for me it was amazing. Uh, she said, go read that book and tell me, you are going to tell me the answer for that question you're asking. Ah. So um, I think that was a, a really good base, a fundamental base for me to be telling people what I know because I grew up that way. So right. uh, when I was uh, in the first year of my career, we have here something in, in UBA that it's called CBC. It's like a common cycle, common first year for many careers uh, in, in the University of Buenos Aires, we have like the, the same first year for architecture, uh, graphic design, um, mm -hmm. fashion design and other careers uh, that are similar in, in some foundations. So uh, I, I, um, I make that, the, 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 that, that cycle, that common cycle for architecture. So I was reading a lot of architecture books and mm. I was uh, talking with my, with my classmates and uh, I always was, were asking, was asking like, uh, who's your favorite architect? Uh, who do you look, look up to be? Uh, and I was like super into the, the, the profession I was, I was going to study. Right. And I think that that's one really, really tricky or, or complicated thing in the in the design education because the thing is that the students don't know much about design when they are in the first year of their careers uh, they don't know how, how I don't know how many study design studies or agencies uh, are in Buenos Aires for example and for me it was like a, the very first thing I, I wanted to know who are the best designers who are the best agencies who is uh, in the top of this career who are these amazing designer so I became when I switched the in that year to graphic design I didn't know much about it so the first thing for me for was uh, to buy some books and to read a lot yeah. of, of material uh, so I, I became aware of who was I don't know who Paula Scher was who Susanna Lico was it's an amazing typography designer and I was uh, reading about this digital uh, revolution in the 90s and all the, the, the things that uh, we we could make with, with that digital typography and then all these shams, uh, the, these technical shams in the industry. So in the first year, I, I was really, really aware of a lot of things that my classmates were. And so uh, mm. I was telling them all the time, do, do you know this designer? Do you see what, what his work looked like? And so I was giving information uh, the same way I was giving my mother information when I was a child, but she already knew the answer. So yeah. she, 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 she only make that so I could, I could practice. That's great. I love that. I think that um, something you said sparked something in me. I think a lot of designers that are kind of getting into design, they really don't have a starting point. They don't really know. And I think it's, it's like, we always, use past work or past people as inspiration. And so by doing that research and learning about who those people are, um, that's kind of gonna how you're going to learn like the background of graphic design and how we got till today and like the history of it, which is going to have such an impact on like you as a designer moving into the future. Um, and so I, I, I love that you said that's like something that you focused on early on in your career and you wanted to learn those things. And I think that I'm assuming you kind of brought that into your coursework as you started to create these these programs is like doing that research and understanding the history of design. Yeah, and, and we built a community uh, and, and at first it, it was a really small community of like five or 10 people that we were uh, sharing all this uh, knowledge and all this, uh, I, I don't know, it, it, 
it comes to the skills too. I mean, do you know how to do it, how to do this in some design software? And, and, and that sort of things were like escalating and they were like a, uh, improving our skills, our knowledge, uh, and other thing that I, I noticed uh, when I, as a director, I, I interview like uh, every uh, every design student a student that came into Wade. It's uh, it's the Argentinian University of uh, Enterprise or something like that could be the, the translation. And when I when I did those interviews, um, I noticed this that that they didn't knew anything about design. But the thing is, design is cultural, and we consume design every day, and it's everywhere all around us. But I always ask they about um, what are their favorite uh, movies or series, and they could not only tell me uh, uh, I don't know a top five of movies, but they could talk about. I don't know, uh, colors in films, uh, climax in films, uh, and all the, all sorts of things that are technical knowledge mm -hmm. about movies, but they, they had it and they, uh, I don't know, they, they weren't uh, going to study uh, our, um, audiovisual arts or, or, or right. they weren't studying to be movie art directors. They were, they were going to study uh, graphic design, but they, they didn't, they weren't aware, sorry, they weren't aware about what design was. So um, the other thing I, I say to them, it's like uh, we are going to meet in like uh, one semester or two, and I'm going to ask you what are your three, three or four or five top five per favorite designers. So that was a question that I, I always yeah. make to students, to students uh, in, in the in the career because uh, you really have to know. Uh, I, I don't mean you, you can know the history uh, and all of that, but you always have to to take a reference designer mm -hmm. and and maybe of course a lot of reference designers to to improve yourself. I love that. Yeah, coming back to you later after a semester or two, like who do you now look oh, up to? Or they were afraid of that of that time. They were yes. like, oh, <laughs> no, I love that. Okay, so. Um, kind of moving on from there, I think I think what's what's interesting about what you're saying is how you're like adding some some history and having the your the designers in the course like think about like the scale of design and the strategy of design. So what were some big radical changes happening in design while you were in this education design field? Um, and how were you able to like portray those and rethink? The design program based on some of those changes. Oh, when uh, I, I think in always well, in one thing that it's uh, the smartphone revolution. I mean, uh, ten years ago we 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 were using internet uh, only at desktop, uh, and then well, uh, all of these uh, mobile devices started to show up, and that was uh, I think a, a point in the profession that we we designers uh mainly here in south america came a little bit uh late i mean uh here everything it's like two or three years late uh but uh it was a really game changer for for designers because we we became the center or, or, or not only the center but i mean a really big part with developers uh, of this really big industry that that in that time, it seems that uh, it was going to change everything, and I I actually believe that it really did. So I mean, of, of course, all, all of the UX design and UI design, and, and uh, I don't know the new technologies designed today, and augmented reality and virtual reality, and the the gaming industry also grew uh, like uh, a lot in that time. So. We were having these not only these smartphones, but people were playing things, were using apps, were uh, using web apps, were were using websites a lot more, uh, and that uh, was a, actually a really really hard to to translate that speed of the industry to to the academic field. So um, there was this really big gap between what was happening in the design industry and what was happening in, in the academic field. I mean, 
we weren't teaching uh, how to design apps, how to do UX. We we wasn't sorry, we wasn't uh, doing that. So we we had to uh, in that time think about it, think how about how we uh, were going to implement that, and it was really a, a hard time. But uh, I think that all universities now at this year are uh, giving this knowledge to to this student to to his students and i mean it's just a common thing now but 10 years ago it was a, a really new thing in the academic, academic field yeah no totally i can totally see how like the smartphone revolution changed everything and i think like academia as a whole the kind of how we think of it is it's always like a little behind or it's just like older and so i i guess like as new technology is coming out, like AI, like all these things that are really pushing the bounds of design in such a short period of time, how is academia and design courses, how are they able to keep up and make sure that they are educating designers with what they need to go into the field today? Well, uh, a lot of universities in that time uh, uh, were uh, up, uh, um, I mean, upgrading their curricula, they were like, uh, we need to change a lot of things because the, all the design curricula were from the 90s. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. the, the actually the, the logics itself of, of education uh, was, uh, were, sorry, the logics were like uh, all in paper, all in person, and we was, we was having like uh, all these digital uh, design design objects uh, that we were we needed to 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 embrace. So um, they they came up with with um, with curricula uh, upgrades. So like a, a little patch uh, here and there, uh, and then some of some of those universities changed the whole curricula. Uh, right. One of my shops as a director in the in the Wadi University was to. Uh, change the curricula that was actually uh, really um, really modern, uh, but uh, we we make a, a couple of changes. The first thing uh, we did for was implementing Figma. Uh, that was uh, the standard for for the market in in that time. Uh, it was uh, 2019, so uh, Figma was already a, a big thing. But uh, the teachers at that time weren't. Uh, giving this knowledge and uh, the students itself was uh, were, were using Figma, so it was uh, just uh, a natural thing to do. So yeah. to, to implement and not, not Figma knowledge, but uh, I mean, um, we we wasn't going to teach students how to use Figma. Just we we was going to use it, and we was going to say, okay, uh, this uh, this work is going to be on Figma. You will have to learn how to use it because we don't have here in Argentina, at least, uh, an approach uh, and uh, technical skills approach. I mean, we we okay. don't teach Illustrator, we don't teach uh, Photoshop. We just uh, teach design in general, uh, and then the students learn by doing. Right. Interesting. Interesting. How how can students impact the curriculum has there been an instance where something that the students are doing has like affected how the curriculum changes in the future yeah i i mean uh actually a lot because um all, all of the universities here made service uh in that time before right. changing the curricula and uh i i actually think the opinion not only if from students, but from professors also, uh, was really a big deal because they were all all saying the, the same thing. Uh, I mean, the the gap between the industry uh, and the academic uh, field, the the gap between uh, the technical skills that the shop positions require and what they were learning. So uh, we will have to we we had to adjust all of these things, but. We were all on the same page uh, in the design community, and I I think that that was uh, really really great in that time because they were they were all thinking the same. Interesting, interesting. Um, so kind of sticking with this thing of the students is like what how they learn in 
academia and at university, how can they integrate like real world experiences? How are you guys able to simulate those real world experiences? So like, obviously, if you think of UI UX design, there's like a process. There's like, oh, you want to do user flows. You want to do wireframes. But in the real world, that's not always the case, right? Sometimes you're like, oh, I just have to skip this stage or go to this stage. So it, how can you guys kind of like simulate and help designers understand that before going into into getting their first job? Well, oh, okay. I, I, I mean, you, you can't um, make the whole experience the same because it's right. not going to, to happen the same way. Like just like you said i mean uh, in the real world there are the, we have other times we have other needs uh, maybe you can skip one step or, or two or sacrifice something to gain something in, in other aspect but uh, i i guess it's more like a, a relaxed way in, in the academic field uh, but the thing we we did in in both my, my university and what I, when i was a, a, a director was to replicate the same uh, problems that we could solve as a designer in the industry. Uh, like uh, if I was, I, I was a, a, a typography teacher, I mean, I, I am today also, uh, but uh, in, in that time I was teaching typography one to other students. Uh, and we did like this um, kind of uh, festival design. So it could be something that they, they can do uh, in the future when, when they graduate. Uh, like a festival for a small group of bands or a festival, maybe it's an art festival or it's a cultural festival, something that the community could need like a, a, a communication problem solving. Uh, and then in the background of that project, we teach all the fundamentals of, of typography, of course, but we mm. channel that knowledge through something real in the practical way. Yeah, totally. I, I mean, I think that's a great example of, I, I think there's also this notion of like a lot of junior designers come to me and they're like, oh, I don't have any real world experience. And I'm like, do something, make a test project, do make up your own company for, and I'll do a logo for that. Like it doesn't have to actually be like a real world actual example, as long as you're like starting to experiment and play with it and understand and put yourself in that scenario, which it sounds like this kind of festival is exactly what you guys were trying to do is like simulate, okay, like this is actually something you're building for. It's not like completely nothing. It's like, we actually are going to put on this festival. So you need to design and think of typography in that way, which will help start them to start thinking about like applying it in a real world scenario. Which is interesting. Yeah, exactly. Actually, yeah, it, it totally makes sense. Actually, uh, we we designed this festival with uh, within uh, in a real space here in Buenos Aires with yeah. with real actually uh, real uh, audience. So they they just can they just needed to think uh, of the user first. And so another thing we we actually changed in in the I don't know in the past. Uh, 10 years of academia in, in design was uh, to move towards a more user-centered design, right? Because uh, mm -hmm. in the 90s, it was designed for enterprise and you were thinking about how to please all of these big companies uh, and no, you weren't thinking about design as a cultural thing or, or you weren't thinking right. about these small problems uh, of the community. So the problems need, need to be real so you can replicate that later in, in work but yeah. it doesn't have to be actually the whole thing real with a real client, but the problem itself, it's real. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love what you said about like moving towards more user-centered design, like academia in general. Um, I think that's fascinating. And obviously that makes a lot of sense for where we are today, especially when we started talking about technology and phones and like we're building for your, the everyday user always. Yeah. Um, yeah. So and, fun. And I think... Uh, uh, it was a, a really big change for companies too because uh, they don't they don't have clients anymore. They have or users or a community, but uh, that, that sort of thoughts uh, of more like a, a old uh, enterprise way they are uh, slowly dying. I mean they are not entirely yeah. dead, but uh, I think that we are going to to be in a greater place uh, year after year. I think that the the design field it's more uh, I don't know, 
more capable than ever to to impact in in the real life yeah oh my gosh I love that I I completely agree um I'm reading I'm rereading um lean ux the book right now and it brings up a lot of like how the past how companies used to function and how much it today is about like understanding the user not building a roadmap for what i'm going to accomplish in the next three years it's like what's happening now what do you need to change what do you need to do for your user and think about it short term okay what's next what is the problem user facing because if you only think high level and build these things for at a company level not thinking about the user then you're not going to be able to build a product that is going to withstand the changes yeah, exactly. in, in society uh, uh, uh. And uh, to to deep uh, to to dig deeper uh, in that in that field, I mean, the thing is that you to, today you have a, a lot of competition as a company that you if you were a company a big company in the nineties you 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 didn't have that so now your product has to be really great uh, at what what it's doing and you have to please your users because if you don't. Uh, you will have no users in the short term. So uh, right. we, we have a lot of cases of, of, of companies and startups that uh, doesn't, uh, I don't know, that doesn't excel in that in that regard. So uh, then impact in business, that impact in business uh, real hard. So they, they just need to, uh, I don't know, to approach uh, in a design thinking way and they, they need to be user-centered. Uh, that, that's the way today, I mean. Totally. And in kind of the education space is that how you're you're teaching designers is like thinking more user-centered approach yeah exactly uh i can give you a, i don't know another example of uh this there was this this um this subject we call graphic design too it's just a generical name but uh the thing we we ask students to to design was uh another festival but it was it was a little bit different because it's like a um um, a movie uh, like uh, these old movies that uh, are going to be again in, in the theaters so it's like uh, you will have to think about an excuse for that uh, it could be for movie critics or it could be for movie fans or it could be I don't know maybe uh, they are going to make it to make another um, Blade Runner movie you know so uh, you will you will grab the first Blade Runner and Put again, put it again in the theater. So you will have to to find this excuse to to design. So that that right. puts a lot of students uh, in a crisis, thinking about an, an excuse to to make that festival. And it was it was just great because uh, uh, it sparks a lot of conversation about the user itself. So it's if, if it's movie critics, they already know the movie, they already know the details, they already know the the cast, they already know everything. They are movie critics. Uh, and you have to design in some way that you are going to give them uh, information that they uh, that they already know, but they could read again. But if it's right. for, I don't know, new users, people who never watch Play Runner, for example, uh, you can't spoil them. You know, I mean, you can you can right. make spoilers about about the movie. You can be careful about the information, and all all of those designs was, uh, uh, I mean, the, the people, the students were thinking about first. Uh, the user needs and then designing. So uh, it, it was a really, a really great exercise. Wow. I love that. That's super, super interesting. Um, I think that's great. Um, okay. So I have a couple of questions around your advice for students or even maybe before they be get into university, like how they can decide if designs for them. So like do you have any tips or um, anything you tell you would tell a student that was thinking of getting into design? Any first steps that they can make to decide, like, oh, this is the the course for me. This is where I should be going. Yeah, I, I mean, the I I gave them uh, a couple of tips, but one uh, I think this it's the most most important uh, that it's something that we talked about earlier. I mean, you have to embrace this profession. You you if you want. To, to be really great in, in the design field, you will have to know this field, you will have to know his history, you will have to know designers, and we don't have to, to agree. I mean, uh, uh, 
uh, you could like one designers and I, I like another. And this is the beauty of, of this uh, of this profession. But the thing is, if I if I were and study, I don't know, photography, I, I need to know like not all, but uh, I don't know, 80 percent of, of the photographers in the world and the history mm -hmm. and learn, learn, learn. Right. Uh, and the other thing is to watch everything with another eyes. I, I always tell them that they have to to change uh, their sight ab about how they see things because uh, you are not an innocent person anymore. You are just mm. uh, uh, a designer. You have to put the design t-shirt and you have to put everything uh, in crisis. Uh, that's one phrase one professor gave me when I was, uh, yeah. I think in, the, in my first year. Uh, he told me like uh, everything I see, Try to make it better. Try to in, to enhance it. Trying to arrange yeah. the things better. Uh, and then I was uh, in the street and and always watching these billboards and these posters. And I was okay. This could be a little more. Uh, I don't know. Uh, in the right or this could be a, a bigger. This could be smaller. Oh my God! This yeah. logo is tremendous. Uh, really? And I was like trying to design with my head. And then uh, software and technical skills. Uh, went to uh, I don't know a third or a fourth um, uh, position in my life because I I was always thinking about design I and how to make things better. Uh, so that's my my advice my my two advice for for new designers to to embrace the profession and to change the the their sites uh, like right away. You will have to look everything with designer's eye. I think that's great advice. I feel like it's like seeing the world as a designer is like a blessing and a curse because design is everywhere you look. Oh, and yeah. as soon as you like uh, open your mind to it. But we <laughs> don't tell that part. <laughs> we don't tell that part. We tell them it's going to be beautiful. No. <laughs> it is not always beautiful. But yeah, it like everything. I think of like anytime I use an app, I'm like, oh, like this experience is not the best experience. Or if I'm at a restaurant and I'm looking at a menu, I'm like, oh my gosh, like th this could have been done so much better. So I think that is like, yeah, I, I think mean, it's an interesting Going out show. to dinner is a nightmare sometimes. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. No, I think that's great yeah. advice though. I, I think that that's a great like first step to really start to be thinking as a designer. So um. So yeah, that's great. Okay, so I have a final question for you. Um, what do you think designers need to know now and how can you or us or academia help prepare them for the future of design? I guess that uh, the thing they need to know is that this profession, it's uh, like uh, really changing in a, in a speed that sometimes it's hard to, to get with. I mean, so the first two two advices uh, were like linked to this one. I mean, you will have to to speed up uh, your knowledge and uh, don't. I mean, not only uh, get what academia gives you gave you. See, uh, so you can uh, learn by yourself really great things. Uh, you have to be curious about it. So embrace the profession. Be curious. Change your sight and hurry up because this profession it's going to the moon and quick yes totally I think that it's like if you go into this profession of design like you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable because you're never going to know anything there's always something new to discover it's like you want to yeah. be that curious person because that's that's the type of person that needs to be able you need to have that mindset as a person to be able to to hop into this career. We are always learning, uh, and and that's uh, the other beautiful thing about it. I mean, uh, we we don't get to get bored. I mean, we we should have to learn to keep doing new things, to keep working for new clients, to learning about I don't know every everything uh, from chairs to to a digital wallet. So. Yeah. Uh, uh that's uh, another another really great part about about this profession you are you are constantly learning new things new skills uh just uh, i don't know making your cultural self more uh, more mature so it's it's really great i mean uh, I, i'm the kind of of designer that really loves this profession uh sometimes 
uh, it put me in a crisis. I'm not going to say it doesn't, but uh, those crises make my myself grow and myself better. So I think it's, yeah. it's the same for everyone. Uh, I know, uh, like a lot of designers that I knew as a student, as a students, uh, and they are, are like a seniors now. Some of them semi seniors and really into the profession. And this, uh, I can see to all of these really great designers that are, that were forged uh in this in this really great profession and uh i really i really enjoy to to see all the the different people with different mindsets uh working in in this field yes oh my gosh well said i i totally agree um i i loved everything you said and i appreciate you coming on this podcast and kind of speaking to us um in terms of like an academic standpoint and how you approach design from from like educating students so I think that's really fascinating I think your tips and tricks of like how to anything from like being user-centered thinking about user-centered design um to your your great advice and tips on how to if you want to get started in it and how to maintain and what type of person needs to be involved was super super interesting so Thank you so much for, for chatting with us. Um, and I look forward to like staying in touch and continuing to see how education and how design shifts as new students are, are kind of being exposed to, to design. Oh, of course. Uh, me, me too, really. I really like the new generation of, of designers. I think they, they are going to, to bring a, a really fresh perspective uh, about this profession so thank you Diane for, for, for the time for, for the opportunity to be here in this podcast so well I see you also thank you again